Today we're going to look at this Arrows P47. It's a 980mm warbird, fully featured with retracts, flaps uh, and everything. Um, so uh, I had some, uh, some issues with this one. So first off, let's just watch a, a nice flight when everything works and just uh, check it out how agile and how nice this one fly in the sky. So today I have the Arrows P47 to fly and it's going to be an interesting and nice flight, hopefully. So uh, let's get it up in the air then. So gears are up. The, uh, this P47 does actually feature wing lights, but it's difficult to see them in this kind of light. So it's really snappy, and what I've learned um, flying this for uh, quite many times is that you ha actually have to be take it easy on all the control services because um, surfaces because um, it is so agile. So just a gentle push on the elevator or um, ailerons to have it roll or loop. So I'm using very gentle moves uh, on the sticks. Doesn't take much for it to roll or loop. Once you actually get the hang of uh, this P-47, it's um, really enjoyable to fly. The first flights I had was uh, really um, ugly because I used too much stick input and the, uh, this airplane just became too squirrely. Now I think it's, um, it's a really fun Agile plane to fly. Also, discover that you actually cannot go too slow on loops um, because then it will um, experience kind of a crazy stall and just start to spiral down. So it is a little bit prone to uh, actually to stall this P47.
It's a little bit more than a minute left on my timer. And I'll take it easy. I'll lose some altitude. And deploy flaps. So with flaps it does slow down, it's not uh, the best slowing down with flaps I've seen. But it um, does make it more manageable on landings. So let's get the landing gears down then. They did deploy as they should, as far as I can see. So one final turn then, and um, let's go into the landing approach. I'm going idle throttle and just Picking up speed just a tad to keep it flying. A little bit bumpy, but um, it was an okay landing. And as usual with this uh, RC airplane, I experienced that on the final stop, you actually do nose down a bit, but uh, uh, it's just a minor issue. Once you get everything dialed in, I think this uh, Arrows P47 flies really nice. Yeah, but there are also a few issues. So I would say the, the first issue is actually if you go by the uh, manual suggested CG point, this one is severely tail heavy. So you, you might think that you have to add you know, a crazy amount of, of uh, extra weight in the nose. Uh, but I don't think that it's a good solution really. And I, I really question if this CG markers are actually spot on for this RC airplane. Because when you fly it, the only thing you notice is actually the elevator becoming touchy. Um, but that, that is something that if you know it, you can actually just be really gentle on the elevator and it flies really nice. And to do all these aerobatics is no problem at all. And I think it's the size and the kind of lightweight makes this one really agile, uh, which is a feature I like. Uh, but then there, are, there is also another issue um, because the uh, distance between the, the prop blades and the cowl is like maybe one or two millimeters uh, at the narrowest part. So it's really easy to actually have the blades hit the cowl uh, if you actually do nose down on, on takeoff or landing. Um, so what I end up doing to, to try to solve this, first off I put a washer behind the spinner. But then the RC plane just wanted to go right all the time. So it was kind of poor solution. And then I had um, um, an engine from an FMS 40B, which did actually fit this one. So I put this uh, motor inside this one with an 80 amp ESC. But it was a really bad match for this one. So it, of course it could fly, but it wasn't fun. So I uh, reinstalled the original engine and just um, the last solution was actually to mount a few washers behind the, the motors where the, uh, the four screws and mounts, uh, mounts inside, I have four washers. And that gives me a clearance of maybe four millimeters, which is you know, okay. Uh, but other than that, I think it's a, it's a really agile RCI playing this. So, I mean, you have the CG issue, which you have to deal with somehow. Of course, um, I run this on a 3S2200 milliamp battery, but I, I think I actually can fit because this uh, the space inside is really roomy and uh, even this uh, front compartment so I, I suppose I actually can put a 3200 and I, I think that would be a better solution also. And I'm really running this on the AR637T receiver so I have all the features of AS3X safe and forward programming. Um, but I also had a really interesting crash with these arrows. Um, I think uh, sometimes they, they do just become really squirrel. I don't know if it is big, due to it being slightly tail heavy or the touchy elevator because sometimes you just get in some, some sort of crazy spiral stall uh, and if you're close to the ground uh, you will just crash it. So I crashed nose down in a ditch 
Uh, of, and of course I broke the prop plates and it actually broke the uh, part of the uh, back plate of the spinner. Um, and I had you know, a hole going through the wing because there was some uh, plants actually uh, where I crashed. Uh, and some marks, but uh, five minutes later I could actually just change the prop and keep, uh, keep on flying. So it wasn't that bad. And I did actually put in carbon fiber rods in this one. So uh, on either, uh, both sides of the inside of the fuse there are actually carbon fiber rods going into the tail section and nose section. So um, I think the, uh, actually the, the fuse and the nose survived due to these um, carbon fiber rods. So it's always a good thing to just put in some carbon fiber rods on parts that might break. And I think the nose, the fuse uh, are, are uh, things that, uh, that usually break when you go nose down because there are a lot of um, impact um, energy. Um, so, I mean, um, I'm not really sure that this is a, a super nice RC airplane because there are uh, so many warbirds and to me the 980 millimeter size uh, it's not you know small like the 800 millimeter warbirds which are really small and tiny and you can fly them in tight spots and it's it does it doesn't have the the stability of the 1.1 1.2 meter warbirds so it's a kind of a in the middle ground, uh, although I, I don't think it's, it's a bad RC airplane because it's really agile when you learn how to fly it and to treat it. I think the, both um, uh, takeoffs on grass works great and landing on, on grass certainly works great as well. So I mean uh, that's just my thoughts about this Aeros P47.